Congratulations. Since the last time I've seen you, you've, uh, you've moved to the November runoff. What does that feel like after, you know, a few months of, of tough campaigning? Well, it's been a wild ride, uh, but uh, we were very successful on March 5th. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we were the top vote getter, won by, by, by almost 17%. And so, you know, we move on. Uh, we're now preparing for the March 19th special election um, as, we, uh, as, as, we, uh, as we gear up for that. But, uh, as, uh, you know, our message is resonating. As we travel throughout the 20th Congressional District, um, you know, the, the voters are, are hungry for a proven conservative uh, that can hit the ground running and tackle the, the real challenges facing our state and country. And so we're, um, so we're very excited and we want to build on the momentum uh, moving forward. You'll have an interesting uh, opponent in the November runoff, um, uh, Mike Boudreau, uh, Sheriff Mike Boudreau. So it's another Republican. Normally we're used to seeing in California two Democrats run against each other for offices. What does that mean? Does it change anything for you in the way that you're going to run for November? It, it, well, you know, it's, uh, everyone was, was running a spirited campaign, but it doesn't change anything for us. Uh, our goal was uh, to be the top vote getter. Um, and, to, and our message is still the same. Uh, the, the voters in, uh, of the 20th Congressional District uh, see our state and country in, in real dire straits, and they want someone that can, um, that can s strengthen and secure uh, the southern border. Uh, they want someone that can rein in uh, federal spending, get our fiscal house in order, and they want someone that, that will defend our water and energy resources. And as they looked at all the candidates, uh, they chose me. And you know, that's why I'm proud to have the endorsement of, of, of President Donald Trump. He evaluated all the candidates um, as we went into the March 5th primary, and he endorsed us. And you know, we have the support from, from, from the National Border Patrol Council. Uh, you know, I'm still in contact with them as they give me real-time uh, updates on what's happening on the border. This is a real serious crisis that we have uh, on the border and, and, of course, uh, all the other challenges facing our country. And so uh, you know, the voters uh, want someone that can unify our community, and, and uh, we're moving forward. You've won a, a number of endorsements from, uh, as you mentioned, from uh, President Trump, National Border Council. Uh, a couple of surprise endorsements that maybe didn't go your way, but still seems pretty civil as Senator Shannon Grove and uh, Kern County Sheriff Donnie Youngblood. What was your reaction when they made their endorsement of uh, Sheriff Boudreaux? Well, well, those weren't surprises to us. Uh, we, we, were, we prepared for that. Um, and again, at the end of the day, we care about what the voters care about. Uh, and as, as the voters evaluated all the candidates, um, you know, we were the top vote getter and we were successful. So at the end of the day, the endorsements, uh, they're important. They, they, they indicate uh, your effectiveness and the ability to be, uh, to be a, a, a strong conservative voice uh, in Congress. But the most important voice uh, is, is the voice of the constituents of the 20th Congressional District. And the results uh, show for themselves uh, who they want to be their Congress member in, 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 in November. And absolutely, as you talk about what the constituents are feeling in the country, last week was also the State of the Union from President Biden. If you, if you saw some of it, what was your reaction to it? And, and I guess, what would, your, um, what would your first goals be going forward if you were to start serving in Congress, you know, come this June or so? Well, the, 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 the State of the Union address that President Biden gave was a very angry speech, uh, one that was very divisive. And right now, as our country deals with, with a, tr a tremendous amount of challenges, um, you know, we need to bring the country together. And, um, you know, and Californians and, and Americans are rightfully upset. Uh, if you compare uh, the last four years to the four years under President Trump, uh, we were fundamentally better off under President Trump. Uh, we had a better economy, our border was secure, uh, we were energy independent. Um, for us in the Central Valley, we had water flowing uh, in, uh, under new biological opinions um, that President Trump signed right here in Bakersfield. And so, as we evaluate uh, moving forward, uh, who should be our next president? Uh, I believe that President Trump will be uh, not only uh, a successful uh, pr president moving forward uh, when he gets elected uh, in November, but I look forward to working with him to, to tackle these tremendous challenges because President Biden um, has taken our country in a different direction and not for the better. As, as imagined, it might be a smoother ride for you working with, with President Trump, but if you are to come in in June, what does that look like in kind of a unique situation where you're coming in and towards the, uh, the uh, middle or, or, or towards maybe, let's say, 75% of uh, your, what would be your predecessor's term? How does that look like in those uh, number of months with a very razor-thin majority? Well, we're going to hit the ground running. Uh, again, as I said before, if you evaluate all the candidates, um, you know, I'm the most effective and experienced and tested and trusted individual that can really, um, you know, elevate the Central Valley's priorities on, on a national level. Um, you know, we are in serious times um, and we need serious people that can tackle these challenges. And so uh, if, if I'm fortunate enough to get elected uh, in, in you know, March 19th or in May, um, you know, we're going to hit the ground running and we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to do everything we can 
to ensure that the 20th Congressional District has the most effective voice possible in Congress. Are you worried at all about that looming uh, lawsuit that it looks like it's going to be possibly decided or heard after the uh, uh, April 4th certification? Uh, we aren't concerned at all. Uh, if, you, if you look at what's happening right now, uh, what the Liberal Secretary of State is trying to do is invalidate an election and, and basically disenfranchise and, uh, voters in the 20th Congressional District. Uh, that is not only wrong, but it's undemocratic. And so we are, uh, we are going to be successful, and uh, we look forward to being successful on March 19th. We look, we look forward to being successful in November, and we look forward to representing uh, the 20th Congressional District uh, moving forward. What is the biggest issue for you if you are to start serving in, let's say, May or June? Well, we just gotta, we have to, we, we've gotta, we gotta govern, and we've gotta, we've gotta really tackle these challenges, and um, we gotta, we gotta deliver results. Uh, yeah, as I travel throughout the Central Valley, um, you know, the, the Californians and the Central Valley residents are upset, and rightfully so. Uh, they're seeing um, the, uh, the, the state and their community change before their eyes and not for the better. And that's why I'm running. Um, I'm running to, to not only uh, advocate for our community, but to ensure that our community has the strongest voice possible. Uh, to uh, take on these challenges that we face as a state and country. Uh, I know your uh, one of your mentors, Bill Thomas, was very big on uh, you know kind of crunching the numbers and, and, and looking at things like that. And of course, uh, Kevin McCarthy was a great negotiator. Where do you see yourself? I guess when you start jumping in, is there any committees or things that catch your eye like that? And again, you're coming in the middle of the year. Well, my my uh, my goal and, and my mission uh, as being elected uh, as not only in the assembly but now trying to get elected in the Congress is to ensure that our community has a strong voice. Uh, I, as when I ran for the assembly and now running for Congress, and the Central Valley has had this bullseye uh, drawn on it, um, and uh, not only from Sacramento but from Washington D.C. And we see the consequences of, of, of very bad liberal policies uh, in our community. You look at. Uh, our oil challenges, you look at our energy challenges, you look at our water challenges, uh, you look at public safety, our, our supply chain crisis, uh, in addition to the, 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 the priorities I've outlined with, with the border and fence on human trafficking and, and just uh, inflation and the affordability crisis. I mean, the, the laundry list of, of, of challenges gets longer and longer and longer, and it's all driven by terrible policies uh, coming from, um, from the left. And so we need to bring conservative principles uh, into, the, into the conversation that, and, and begin to tackle these problems head on um, and deliver results for the Central Valley. I know you've been big on fiscal responsibility here in California. Is that something that uh, you, know, you can take to uh, Washington as well? I know that's a big topic right now, of course, just continuing to pass these stop gaps for budget deals. Well, well getting our fiscal house in order is, is, again, one of the things that we have to do, not only as a state and as a country. Our state is in a fiscal mess. Our, 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 the, the federal government is in a fiscal mess as well. And so we're going to have to get um, uh, down to brass tacks and, and go line by line through the budget uh, and figure out um, how to make critical investments that we need not only uh, as a region but uh, as a country, but then also begin to eliminate and, and, and weed out wasteful spending uh, and, and become more effective. Uh, we need to evaluate every program. And if, if those programs aren't working, then we shouldn't fund them. But the problem that we, I, I've seen in Sacramento, and it's the same problem that I see uh, in Washington, D.C., is that uh, you've got uh, people that define success simply based on how much is being spent. And that's not how we define success. That's not how Californians define success, and that's not how I define success. Success is basically, are these programs working? Are we delivering results? And if they aren't working, then we should basically take that money and put it into something else. Another big issue, too, once you start, of course, it's big for the state, too, but once you get into the national level, is too, is the border policy. You've talked about your endorsement from the National Border Council. Um, on that topic, you know, is that something where you're looking to come in and see if you can get a deal or, or, or look to negotiate, or is that something where maybe it's kicked down the line and maybe that's something that is taken on if President, uh, former President Trump is, uh, you know, elected to office? Well, we need to sec secure the border now. I mean, President Biden can take action immediately. We are uh, awaiting for him to, to, to do executive action. Uh, this is something that, that myself and, and, uh, and a lot of my uh, colleagues in, in Congress have, have, have called for. I mean, under President Trump, um, the border was more secure. He took action. He was building physical barriers. He was supporting the Border Patrol. He was giving them the flexibility uh, to, to do the job on the border. Um, he was giving them technology. All of those things that were happening. When I was on the, uh, when I was, uh, on the border uh, just a few weeks ago, I mean, you can see physical gaps. We were building physical barriers that were, that were, that were, being, uh, 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 they were being done under President Trump. 
And when President Biden took over, he stopped all that construction. And so those gaps now are areas where there's human trafficking, there's fentanyl being, uh, being moved across uh, those areas. Um, there's, there's, there's smuggling, the cartels are, are running operations uh, through those areas. I mean, what, uh, what I saw on the border cannot be described. It is a scary, scary uh, environment. And we need to do everything we can to support the Border Patrol. And there is legislation. If you look at the, the, the proposals now in Congress, I mean, they're out there. They've been outlined. And so first and foremost, let's secure the border. We don't need pathways to amnesty. And that's unfortunately uh, a lot of the policies that some of my opponents um, support. We need to secure the border first and take everything in a step-by-step -step process. Would you have impeached uh, Secretary Mayorkas as well? Absolutely. I mean, what, he, what is happening right now, he's, he's not doing the job. And in fact, I, I, if I were him, I'd probably just ask him to step down. You'd be in a majority going into Washington, which is very unique considering that you're you know, in California. And of course, Republicans are a little bit of a minority in the state house. Uh, what would that mean for you? What freedoms does that give you uh, if you were to be elected? Well, certainly being in the in majority would allow us to actually make, make real policy. Uh, certainly serving in the, in the state assembly, um, you know, we've, I've learned and, and have been very effective in, in, in building coalitions and bringing people together uh, to, to, to tackle the challenges that we face as a community in Sacramento. And that's going to be the same approach I take when I go to Washington, D.C. At the end of the day, our problems and our challenges are so large that we've got to build a coalition bigger than we've ever built before to, to tackle those problems. But uh, I am a, 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 a strong conservative. I have a proven conservative record. And at the end of the day, I believe those conservative principles are the, are the principles that will form the foundation to, to, to solve these problems that we face as a country. You, you tackled catalytic converter theft here in California. Um, now, how do you take uh, issues of crime to the, to the uh, uh, national level or to the federal level, which is you know, maybe a little bit dif more difficult to do than tackling you know, state law issues? Well, we got to hold criminals accountable. Uh, we, see, uh, we see retail theft, we see um, crime spiking across the country. In California, it's, it's, it's even worse because of Prop 47. Uh, that's why I partnered um, you know, with, with, with our local district attorney here. We, I partnered with the Fresno County District Attorney. We're trying to change Prop 47. Uh, I only have I contributed to the initiative that they're uh, trying to qualify but I'm actually campaigning for it and, and collecting signatures for it because that's critically important. Now, when, we, when, we have, when we look to November, uh, one, of the, one of the most important topics that we'll get the chance to hopefully vote on is this initiative to basically undo Prop 47 and to actually increase penalties and hold criminals accountable. You know, at the end of the day, a lot of these soft on crime policies uh, that not only have been coming out of D.C. but have been coming out of California uh, have, made, have made things worse. Uh, our community doesn't feel safe. We see uh, the consequences. Uh, crime rates uh, are, are going up across the board. And so the solution is very simple. We have to increase penalties and hold criminals accountable. The question that we have to ask ourselves and ask our public uh, officials is, do we have the political will to make those changes? And hopefully, uh, I'll be a, a voice and an advocate to make that happen and be, a, a, be, and, 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 and be that, that, that change. And then my last question for you, uh, just touching back to earlier on, on the lawsuit, I know that uh, so far it seems like your Republican opponent has been pretty civil on this issue. Are you prepared if that uh, changes and he starts to throw in attacks, you know, if you're you know, once again confirmed to be allowed to run uh, for this 20th congressional seat? Oh, you know, we'll be prepared for anything. Uh, in, 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 you know, a lot of things happen in politics, but at the end of the day, when, when we talk about uh, elections, right, it, the voters get the right to choose. That was the fundamental argument we made uh, in, in court that, that w and, and why we were successful is because when we look at elections, who has the ultimate power? It's the voters. It's not a judge. It's not a liberal secretary of state. And if someone wants to advocate uh, for the, uh, the in invalidation of votes and to, and, and to undo an election, not only is that wrong, that's undemocratic, and I'll have that fight with anybody because my advocacy and my, my position is that I want to give the voters a choice to choose the best candidate, to give them the chance to choose the best candidate they feel <clears throat> will represent them in Congress. And at, at right now, they've chosen me. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah.